Hello everyone. Namaskar. Raj Krishna this side and let's solve this question from linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So we have to solve this. d cube minus d square plus d minus 1 operating on y equals to 4 sin x. How can we go ahead with this? First of all we have to find the complementary function for that we write auxiliary equation and in auxiliary equation just replace this d by m so you get m cube minus m square plus m minus 1 now equate it to 0 let's solve this and find the values of m so we can take m square common from the first two terms you get m minus 1 you can take one common from the latter two terms you get m minus 1 common equals to 0 therefore you get m minus 1 and m square plus 1 equals to 0 so either m minus 1 equals to 0 that is giving you m equals to 1 or m square equals to minus 1 that is giving you m as plus my minus iota complex roots so you're getting three values of m 1 plus iota and minus iota so 1 is a distinct root and a real root so Complementary function for that will be C1 e power m1x so e power x and for the other two this is nothing but 0 plus iota and 0 minus iota if you compare this to a plus iota b and a minus iota b this will be a will be 0 b will be 1 now so for them we will write e power 0x c1 I have already used so c2 sin bx b here is 1 plus c3 sorry cos comes here cos bx doesn't matter plus c3 sin bx that wouldn't have mattered because we'll have to add at the end okay. so this is uh, what we are having now we can further simplify this because e power 0 x is 1 Let's move to the particular integral and that will be 1 upon f of d which is d cube minus d square plus m uh, sorry plus d minus 1 operating on I think 4 sin x yes. Four I can take out. I will take that in the next step. Now, sin ax or cos bx, whenever you have, you replace d square by minus of a square. A here is 1. So, you will replace d square minus of 1 square. Fine. So, let us do that. Particular integral is 4 comes out. This can be written as d square into d d square can be replaced by minus 1 into d so you get minus d again this d square if you are replaced by minus 1 1 minus is all also there so plus 1 this d remains as it is this minus 1 remains as it is as you can see this is a case of failure because you are getting denominated as 0 so you will write this is a case of Failure because denominator is 0. So, what we do in case denominator becomes 0? We go back to the previous step. I wish to say this step. And what we do? We differentiate the function of d whatever we are having. And at the same time, we multiply by 1x outside the operator. Okay. 
so your particular integral will be 1x being multiplied and if you differentiate dq you get 3d square if you differentiate d square you get 2d if you differentiate d with respect to d i am differentiating so you get 1 and if you differentiate minus 1 you are getting 0 this sin x remains as it is and I think 1 4 was also there so that should be there 4x okay now again do the same thing again replace d square by minus of 1 if you do that this time you are getting minus 3 minus 2d plus 1 so you are getting minus 2d minus 2 that is clearly not equal to 0 but yes that needs some simplification for us minus 2d minus 2 so I can take this 4x is already there I take 2 common from denominator I get it was minus 2d minus 2 so if I take minus 2 common then I get d plus 1 isn't it minus 2d minus 2 I took minus 2 common and because I have d plus 1 and for sin x I need d square in each step to proceed so I am multiplying by d minus 1 in numerator and denominator and this sin x remains as it is. Next step, this becomes minus 2x d minus 1 in numerator. In denominator, you get d square minus 1 operating on sin x. Okay. Again, d square to be replaced by minus 1. Another minus 1, you will get minus 2. Minus 2 will get cancelled with this minus 2. So you get x outside and you are getting d minus 1 operating on sin x. So you can write that as d of sin x minus sin x. Fine. Minus 2d minus 2 was there. Okay, fine. So this is uh, what we are having. Now derivative of sin x is cos x, so you are getting x cos x minus sin x. This is your particular integral. And finally as you all know that your y equals to cf plus pi, cf is also there, pi is also in front of us. So now you can write your y equals to cf. order was 3 and as you can see 3 constant is there plus your pi which is x cos x minus sin x there you get your answer so to summarize we first found the auxiliary equation solved we got 3 roots 1 plus iota and minus iota for real and distinct we have c1 e power x for complex we have e power 0x, c2 cos bx plus c3 sin bx. Okay. Wait. That b is there as 1. So why I am writing bx? That should be 1 in place of b. It should be 1. So I will have to correct that once again so in place of where you are seeing 1 it should be uh, so let's take help of eraser the background should be black eraser should be larger so let's make that now uh, c1 cos bx okay from here we need correction so here we go 
let's omit entirely this is also not fine and 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 this is also not fine anywhere else yes. so let's make use of so uh, cos bx b is 1 so cos x plus c3 sin x so c2 cos x plus c3 sin x c2 cos x plus c3 sin x now it's fine so you uh, summarize it carefully okay that's how summarization helps us and then we went on to find the particular integral case of value was there multiply by 1x outside the operator and differentiate the denominator find it uh, every time case of failure comes do the same thing if case of failure would have come again then we would have again multiplied by 1x and differentiate the denominator so that's it from my side for more problem you can always visit the playlist which is ordinary differential equation thanks again